Now let's talk about the limit of a sequence, starting with a simple example where we're looking at the sequence 1 over n, where n ranges from 1 to infinity. And these are particular values of 1 over x, where x takes a value 1, and then 2, and then 3, and so on. So we are looking at the restriction of the function 1 over x to the natural numbers. One way of uh, thinking of the sequence is as a function from the natural numbers to R that associates to n 1 over n. And so um, we can think of the values as uh, the y values for points that are on the graph of 1 over x corresponding to x values that are just positive integers. And so the y values are the values of our sequence and seem to be approaching zero. So what is the limit? Well, uh, it looks like it might be zero, but let's try to, um, uh, to make explicit this concept of limit for a sequence. Now keep in mind that we can think of the sequence as a function, and in the case of functions from the real numbers to the real numbers, we have already defined in calculus one a concept of limit at infinity. So let me remind you what it was. Uh, the limit of a function when x goes to infinity is L if the values of f of x can be made as close to L as we want by taking x sufficiently large. That's how you define the uh, limit of a function at infinity. Formally what that means is that uh, if you fix an epsilon, no matter how small, and you want the distance between f of x and the limit to be less than this epsilon, so in other words, you want f of x very close to L, uh, then you can do that <coughs> for any x large enough. So in other words, there is some value such that whenever x is greater than that value, then f of x is going to be within epsilon of L. So now we can do exactly the same for a sequence, which is just a particular kind of function. Um, this is just that instead of taking a real number as uh, the input, it takes a natural number as the input. But we can just take the same function, I'm sorry, the same definition for a function defined on the natural numbers and say that the limit of the sequence an as n goes to infinity is L if we can make the values of the function, in other words the values of an, as close to the limit as we want by taking the variable n sufficiently large. Formally, what that means is that um, for every epsilon, if we want the distance between a n and the limit to be less than epsilon, we can achieve that by taking the variable little n sufficiently large. In other words, there is some capital N such that whenever the index is greater than that, we get a n within this distance of the limit. So now let's use that uh, to check that the limit of 1 over n is indeed 0. For every epsilon, well, let's test for a particular epsilon. Let's say we pick epsilon is 0.1. So what that means is that we want the values of the sequence, in other words, 1 over n, to be within 0.1 of 0. In other, in other words, we want 1 over n to be less than 0.1. And we need to find a capital N such that whenever a little n is greater than that, this condition is true, that 1 over n is less than 0.1. So we can, for instance, take for capital N 11, because if n is greater or equal to 11, then 1 over n is certainly less than 1 tenth, which is 0.1. So it's less than epsilon. So for any n greater than greater or equal to 11, 1 over n is less than our epsilon, which was 0.1. Okay, that's for a particular epsilon. What if we take a smaller one, say 0.01? Well, then whenever n is greater or equal to 101, then 1 over n is less than 1 over 100, which is 0 0.01, which was our epsilon. Okay, that's for two epsilon. Can we do that for any epsilon? Well, to do that for any epsilon, we need to take some epsilon, we don't know what it is, but we think of it as something small because we're looking at what happens uh, to make an very close to the limit. Uh, 
and then we need to find capital N as a function of epsilon. So here, if I take my little n greater or equal to 1 over epsilon plus 1, well, that's the same as um, 1 plus epsilon over epsilon, then the reciprocal, 1 over n, is going to be um, less than or equal to epsilon over epsilon plus 1, Epsilon plus 1 is greater than 1, so I divide Epsilon by something greater than 1, I get something less than Epsilon. In other words, I have found here my capital N as a function of Epsilon, explicitly 1 over Epsilon plus 1. I found one. It's not necessarily unique. In general, it's not. Uh, but all I need is um, some value um, that is going to to work. Now here of course for capital N I would like to have uh, an integer, a positive integer. And so of course uh, 1 over epsilon plus 1 may or may not be a uh, positive integer but I can take for capital N the first positive integer greater than 1 over epsilon plus 1 and then whenever my little n is greater than that capital N, it's all going to be also greater than 1 over epsilon plus 1, and my condition will be satisfied. So now notice that the limit of 1 over n as n goes to infinity is the same as the limit of 1 over x, where x goes to infinity and x is a real number instead of just a natural number. And of course this is true in general, that if you have a function from the reals to the reals, whose limit at infinity is L and then you're looking at the sequence that is defined by looking at the values of that function at the natural numbers right? so f of 1, f of 2, f of 3 and so on that defines a sequence then the limit of that sequence is going to be also L because of course um, saying that the limit of f of x as x goes to infinity is L is saying that I can make all of the values of f of x as close to L as I want by taking x sufficiently large. But then if I take x sufficiently large, well, that includes all the large natural numbers, and then I get the condition I need for the limit for the sequence, right? Because if f of x is within epsilon of L for x sufficiently large, this is true in particular of all f of n for n sufficiently large. So for instance, if I look at the uh, limit of 3 plus 5 n squared over 2 plus n plus 3 n squared so when you have an explicit formula for your sequence well very often you can use what you know to find the limit of a regular function defined on the real numbers um, in order to find that limit right? you can look at it as you know that it's going to be the same limit as the limit of the function of x when x is a real number and um, this function is a quotient of two polynomials and this is something that you've discussed in calculus 1 how to find the limit at infinity of this type of expression uh, there are various ways to do that but in particular you should have seen that uh, when you have a quotient of two polynomials and you're looking at the limit at infinity if the degree of the top is higher than the degree of the bottom then the limit is infinite if the uh, degree of the bottom is higher than the degree of the top then the limit is zero and if the two polynomials have the same degree then the limit is the quotient of the coefficient of the leading coefficients at the top and the bottom in this case the leading coefficient at the top is five and at the bottom is three so the limit is five thirds Let's look at another example. Let's look at the sequence defined by a n is natural log of n square divided by n. And we want to know the limit as n goes to infinity. So in other words, we are interested in the behavior when n is large. Sometimes it's referred to as the asymptotic behavior of the sequence. So I can think of it as the limit as x goes to infinity where x is a real number and it's a limit of natural log of x square over x log of x square I can pull out the two that's one of the uh, logarithm properties of logarithm 
So it's a limit at infinity of two natural log of x over x. And we've discussed a way to deal with this type of indeterminate form because the top 2ln of x goes to infinity and the bottom x goes to infinity as well. So we have an indeterminate form of the type infinity over infinity. We can use the rule of de l'hôpital. And we can do that because we're looking at the function of the real variable x and then we have a quotient of differentiable functions. Otherwise, the rule of de l'hôpital would not apply to the functions of... Um, uh, restricted to the natural numbers because then it's not differentiable. So we apply the rule of de l'hôpital. The derivative of the top is 2 over x. Derivative of the bottom is 1. When x goes to infinity, 2 over x goes to 0. So the limit is 0. And that is the limit of our sequence. What about the limit uh, at infinity? Well, for sequences, to start with, this is something that I should have mentioned. When we are talking about the limit of a sequence, uh, it is implicitly understood that we are looking at the limit as n goes to infinity. The only type of limit that we are going to consider for a sequence is when n goes to infinity, the asymptotic behavior. So when n goes to infinity, um, n pi is going to keep switching value between 1 and negative 1. But specifically, when n is 1, you have cosine pi, which is negative 1. When n is 2, you get cosine 2 pi, which is 1. And then cosine 3 pi, negative 1. Cosine 4 pi, 1. So it alternates between negative 1 and 1. Specifically, it is negative 1 to the n. So this 2 plus cosine n pi can be rewritten as 2 plus negative 1 to the n. Now, what are the values here? You get 2 plus 1, 3, or 2 minus 1, 1. So the sequence alternates between 3 and 1. Uh, it jumps 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1. And therefore it cannot approach any fixed number because if you think of the definition of the limit, you want the terms of the sequence to be, you want all of the terms of the sequence to be within a uh, small distance of the limit uh, if n is sufficiently large. So I cannot make all the terms close to 1, I cannot make all the terms close to 3 because it keeps jumping from one value to the other. Therefore there is no limit. And one way to say that is that the sequence is divergent. When there is a limit we'll say that the sequence is convergent.